Hi, I'm Bill Foland, and I'm going to talk about an abstract meaning representation parser using LSTM. Um, AMR represents sentence meanings in the form of graphs, and the concepts or, or nodes are the, I, I mean the uh, nodes are concepts, and the uh, edges are relations. AMR graphs include predicate argument structures, named entities, word sense, disambiguation, uh, wikification of named entities, normalization of temporal expressions, polarity, quantification, and, and other, th other things. So here's an example of an AMR that I'll use throughout the talk. Uh, the sentence is, thus you can imagine my amazement at sunrise when I was awakened by an odd little voice. So um, one thing to note is that um, words are mapped to predicates so when, when it's appropriate. So the word thus is mapped to cause 01, the prop bank uh, cause 01. Can is mapped to a, a concept of possible 01. In some cases, words are mapped directly like U is mapped to the concept U. Amazement is... Uh, is is a nominalization of amaze 01 so the uh, predicate is shown in the in the uh, AMR uh, odd little voice is a the noun phrase odd little voice is this little cluster here and time can be represented as uh, relations of time so in this case um, sunrise is the time of the awakening and also the time of the amazement So an AMR corpus consists of uh, sentence and AMR pairs. And there are about 20,000 training pairs from LDC 2015 that we used. Uh, the alignment of sentence to AMR for training isn't given, so an automated, an automated aligner is used. So the, as the parser's goal is to t take a sentence and output an AMR. So the, that problem can be partitioned into two main subtasks. Number one, discover the concepts or, or the nodes of the, of the graph. Number two, determine the relations that connect the concepts. Um, in our case, our parser doesn't make use of any part of speech tags or syntactic pre-parsing. And concepts are inferred using IOB tagging. So there's 131 output class types um, relations are divided into two categories. There's prop bank, semantic roles, uh, we call those uh, args, so they're predicate sourced, and also uh, non-predicate sourced, so there's 46 of those. Non-predicate uh, sourced um, relations are modifiers, quantifiers, temporal relations, etc. So the uh, the basic building block of our parser is a bidirectional LSTM, which is really great for uh, sequences that identifies long distance relationships necessary for semantic extraction. And our, uh, the first bidirectional neural network in our parser is called the subgraph uh, network. And it takes as input uh, word features and the named entity from the U of I Wikifier, which we use and uh, produces a set of probabilities associated with the uh, uh, subgraph uh, tags. Then we choose the most likely of those and we infer the concepts. Then those concepts are used as input to the next neural network, which is the arguments neural network, uses uh, word features again and produces a probability tensor whose dimensions are words by words by prop bank rules. And we also produce a probability tensor for the non-arguments. <coughs> then the, there's a subgraph relation resolution algorithm that uh, decides which relations should be connected to which concepts. So we have a connected AMR as the, the result of that process. And there, there's more to AMR than just that. 
It's also attributes and named categories, for example. So uh, we also have a stage at the end that puts everything together in, into a, a final AMR. Uh, the network is constructed with Keras, uh, with TensorFlow backend, using pre-trained 300-dimensional glove embeddings, uh, four-layer deep bidirectional LSTM, 300 units wide, uh, a dropout of 0.3 and 0.4 for the recurrent connections. Uh, the output classifier is three deep, 300 wide with L2 norm. Um, we're using cross-entropy SGD with RMS prop optimization and batch normalization. So as an, as an example, let's, uh, let's do a parse of this sentence. Um, the first thing that happens is the SG network uh, tags all the words. So in, the, in this case, it tagged the word thus with a predicate 01. So combining the predicate 01 tag with the surface form thus, we, we create the cause 01 concept with those two pieces of information. Um, N uh, means non-predicate. So U is tagged as a non-predicate. CAN is uh, tagged as a predicate 01, and we create possible 01 from that. Imagine is a predicate 01, et cetera. And I want to also point out that AMRs aren't as simple as what I'm showing here. This is a simple example with just really just two tags out of the 131 that are necessary in order to really recreate the AMR. Um, there can be one to many, a one to many relationship where a word can map into multiple concepts or a concept might, might be uh, uh, synthesized where no words exist that describe it in the sentence. So um, there is no one for one mapping, but I'm kind of showing it that way here. Um, but with this sentence, we pretty much map to uh, the concepts in that way, in that simple way. And we come up with this disconnected set of concepts now. So now this bag of concepts uh, needs to be connected with relations. So uh, we're going to take the probability tensors, one for args and one for non-arguments, and combine that with uh, some constraints that we can make use of. Um, <clears throat> AMRs are simple directed graphs, so there's a max of one relation between concepts. Uh, and we can limit predicate arguments to one of each kind. For example, just one arg zero coming from a predicate. So we use a greedy edge connection algorithm while making use of those constraints, and now we create a connected AMR graph. So uh, with the probability tensors and the, and the AMR concepts, we go forward starting off with a completely disconnected graph just consisting of concepts look for the most probable uh, relation in the tensors, and it turns out to be the uh, connection between cause 01 and possible 01, connecting those with an arg1 relation. So we adjust the tensors and then repeat, find the most probable. Most probable now is arg1 to connect to imagine 01, and so on down the line. Eventually we'll create uh, other subgraphs that won't necessarily be connected, but the system eventually creates a full subgraph and, th and then we're done. So the problem with this is it, it does have errors. So uh, the, the parser produces errors, of course. So one of the errors that it produced here was that it, uh, it created an amazement 01 uh, concept. It should be an amaze 01 concept. Um, Wake was connected to I, it was really, I'm, I'm sorry, Wake was connected to you, it really should be connected to, to me, because I was the one who awakened. Uh, the awakening happened at sunrise, so that was just left out completely. And then an argument, uh, arg zero, was uh, mistaken for what should have been an arg one. Um, the way AMR graphs are compared against each other is by using a program called Smatch. Um, so what we want to do is compare a human-generated AMR with the parser output in some methodical way. 
Um, the way SMATCH works is it heuristically aligns the concept nodes between two graphs, then it decomposes the graphs into triples and computes uh, a precision, a recall, and then an F1 from that. And then the F1 score is reported as a SMATCH score. So the SMATCH score for the example we just walked through was uh, 0.844. Uh, the training and evaluation corpus is specified by the SEMEVAL 2016 Task 8. Uh, it's about 16,800 training pairs, 1,300 1, development pairs, 1,300 test pairs, 1,053 evaluation pairs. The evaluation pairs are interesting because they're out of domain uh, res with respect to the training data. Um, and then the sentence to AMR alignment is... is uh, we get that from an automatic aligner. So the SMATCH results from the uh, task eight are shown here at the, at the bottom part of the chart um, from last year. And our parser, I'm showing the results of 12 training runs with our parser. So trained it 12 times and then we're sh I'm showing the statistics of those 12 training runs. Um, and we're achieving a 0.652 score on the out-of-domain evaluation data uh, and a 0.62 score on the, uh, well, versus a 0.62 score from last year. And then you can also see that the, the in-domain data, the test F1 is, is higher, and that's kind of a general trend. Uh, in conclusion, the, uh, the AMR parser improves the state of the art by more than 5%. It uh, uses multiple bidirectional LSTM networks, uh, no syntactic pre-processing, so no dependency parse as input, uh, uses limited training data, and demonstrates robust out-of-domain performance. Um, future work will include improving the parser performance with better alignment uh, from the sentence to the uh, AMRs for training better relation identification, and increased training data. And exploiting the, we can exploit the probabilistic structure of AMR that's created in this parser and extend that to create a distributed meaning representation of the, of the sentence and use the resulting representation for tasks such as natural language inference. Thank you. Oh, there you are, okay. It's a, good, it's a good question. Um, I, th I think it's more of a philosophical uh, choice, trying to get to the point where we have a standalone end-to-end -end AMR parser without requiring uh, any pre-parsing on the front end. Um, I think the, uh, the AMR parser does a pretty good job of extracting syntax kind of implicitly, um, and it, it might help it to give it a, an explicit uh, uh, syntax parse as input, but we didn't try that. Um, hi, here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how do you decide when to stop connecting the concepts to each other? Because even when the graph is connected, this might still be re-inferences which need to be added. So how do you deal with that? I mean, you stop, at which point do you stop connecting concepts by the uh, highest score ranking? Uh, that's also a good question. So um, one of the things that we do is we make use of a threshold in the probabilities as we connect. So at first we connect the most probable connections, but once we reach a, a threshold, then we start favoring connections that connect disjoint subgraphs. And then the stopping condition is we have a completely connected graph.
I think it definitely could help. Um, I think the reason that we, we chose this particular architecture is because it was, uh, it was, it was just more tractable. Um, and we, we could uh, infer the graph on a more, um, you know, based on, based on the subgraph probabilities as well. And rather than making that hard decision up front, we're doing some experiments along those lines. But um, in this case, it's, it's more of a hard decision up front. And then we go forward, like to say it's a pipeline probably would help. So you said um, that you stop making connections when you've got a complete graph. So is that one of the reasons you missed the temporal link, the sunrise link for the? It's possible, yeah. It's quite possible that's why, right. And also that, that time was not high enough probability to be caught early in the connection phase. Sorry, can you elaborate more about where this probability comes from? Because I think that the tensor matrices with probabilities are the core of the second part. W where are they stemming, stemming out? Only from the training data? Uh, so where, where do the probabilities come from? Or is that yeah. the question? So the... Uh, are they coming from the training data or are they coming from other resources? I think you... Well, the, the neural networks are trained with, with the training data to uh, generate tags for every word. And what we do is we run the same network through multiple, oops, sorry, the same network through multiple times. Uh, we, 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 we run it through for each predicate and then every word, and then each predicate, every word like that. So that, that's so what generates only from the, the, training data. the depth of the, uh, right. But, well, I'm not sure what you mean by only for the training data. I mean, that we, we train the network using the training data, but in a forward sense, we're going to run based on whatever the sentence is. Yes, yes, I see. But the, 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 the number of words, uh, the, the, the types, uh, the different senses that you are measuring on during testing are part of the same corpus you used for the estimation of probabilities, right? Part of the same... Uh, Gosh, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand the, the question. There's, there's a, the training set uh, is partitioned. The corpus given. where these examples are coming is yes. exactly the same on which you are testing. Yes, yeah, so the corpus has a standard split. So here's, you know. Yes, here's, yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. 